Okay, hello. I am Kenny Broberg. I was on the 2012-2013 Attached Flow Senior Design Project in cooperation with Super Mileage of Senorville University. Um, and this is a SOLIDWORKS tutorial um, showing you how to make a spline-driven body and the basics of splines and how to lock the uh, geometry around a constraint section. Now this video was recorded before and I'm narrating after so there could be some delay and as I am watching it myself and narrating what I'm doing. So first you want to open up or create your um, your uh, <coughs> constraints. Now the video is paused, don't worry, it's, it's working. Um, this is my constraint section right here. Um, it incorporates just a driver, an engine block, a rear wheel, gear assembly, and one front wheel. Because you only need half the body to really um, uh, test it in ICM and fluent. So I'm only doing one half of the wheel, or one side of the wheels on the front. And that incorporates for my turning radius required for competition. Um, I'm not showing you how to particularly set up your constraints. It's not that difficult. It doesn't have to deal with splines, so you can figure that out on your own. If um, just basically messing with saw works until you know how to do it, or just going off previous experience. So we'll start it from here. Now um, we want to first begin with a curve or a plane that goes the exact middle of our body, and we're going to sketch um, a, a line that defines our middle of our cross section from front to back, where our splines will be split. Now this is diagonal because I found that if I make it a diagonal curve with the back end higher, it's a little easier uh, for a good curvature model um, because the low, the front is low and the back is high due to the engine block. Now we'll define our first cross cross section, go right, going up above the engine block and coming back to the back point. Now as you can see, it intersects the body and the front. So I'm clicking on the spline, and that stupid box is getting in the way. And again, so we're going to try one more time. Okay, there we go. So we click that little arrow and we move it down. Now we want this to be a small blunt point, but we want it to come over the top of our feet. So we change the angle to 90 degrees so it's perfectly straight on blunt point. And this is the curvature. Um, this is if you just basically want smooth transitions and you don't want changes of inflection. So you don't want any um, where the curvature goes below and then above the curve. That's bad. That's very bad for attached flow. So this is pretty good. Um, doesn't require a lot of things. And as you can see, the um, it doesn't leave a lot of room for the curve to go around the foot. Um, so we're probably going to change that just a bit. If I don't, then apparently I thought it was fine the first time. Now I haven't done SOLIDWORKS in a while, so I was just getting used to the controls again. Um, so there are some funky, like, redoing things over and over again. So yes, I didn't like how close it came to the foot, so I'm just going to raise it a little bit and change it back to 90 degrees to get that blunt point. Um, now we want a blunt stagnation point for good attached flow, and um, you can look more into the fluid dynamics to understand why. Now we're going to make the bottom curve separate, but on the same sketch. Um, we'll compensate for that later when we're lofting. Now I put one point near the feet, because that's uh, a point of interest, and one near the back. Uh, it goes below the wheels, or I'll come up to the front again. We're making this a front stagnation point, so we go back to negative 90 on the angle. And as you can see, you get kind of a little funky warp going on, so we want to make this flat on the bottom so we don't shed vortices. So we mess with the, um, the little arrows on the splines to adjust the curvature. The fewer points you have on the splines, the easier it is to work with. So you only want to put them around points of interest. So for me on the bottom, it was one point on the, underneath the feet, one point underneath the back wheel, and then connecting it to either side. Now as you can see, I have slight changes of inflection. Um, the back end doesn't matter as much because you're already going to get detached flow. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure I really like how much that inflection point is on the front, so I'm going to change it just slightly. Just so it all stays smooth. There we go. Okay. As you can see, it's got a nice flat bottom. It comes to the back, and we're going to change that just slightly to make it 180. So it's nice and smooth. You get change of inflection, but it's okay. 
Now, as you can see, um, it's kind of a blunt back, but apparently I thought it was okay. And a lot of this will just be watching what I'm doing, because there's a lot of uh, just kind of looking at the body and seeing if I like the curvature and if I think it will maintain good flow. Um, this comes out of a lot of experience um, working at SolidWorks, researching um, fluids, and going to competition to see other aerodynamic bodies. Now, this is my basic 2D cross section. Uh, I'm turning off the curvature because it gets in the way. And we're going to make reference planes um, to define our uh, where we want. Oh no, okay. Now we have to make uh, a plane at both the front point and the back point. I'm basically doing this so I can get a um, a plane to go from the front point to the back point. This is the easiest way I found. Um, you'll understand in a minute. So. I'm going to sketch on this, just put a guide curve, hide this other one. Now, off, honestly, a lot of the stuff I'm doing here is just little tricks I've done that I've gotten used to doing to help manipulate SolidWorks and what I want it to do. So I'm making it perpendicular to that line. Now I'm done with that. Now I have a a uh, little line in the front, and I'm going to go to the the plane that defines the back, or is uh, intersecting the back point. And I'll do the same thing. Just a little line back there, just a guide curve. We won't actually use this for anything else other than defining a new plane. Make it perpendicular. Looks good. So and that. Now we can make a plane that is intersecting both of those curves. That will define our uh, cross section looking from the top. So we select that front line and the back line, and there you go. Now you've got a nice plane that goes through the body. Just make it a little bigger to show you guys. As you can see, nice and smooth through there, good to work with. So we'll now um, work with this, making our uh, vertical cross section, or no, horizontal cross section, sorry. I'm just hiding those sketches because they are never needed again. So, the spline. We'll start at the front point. I uh, didn't really, couldn't really tell if it was coming or attached to the front point for real. There we go, now we got the uh, the coincident marker coming up. Come around the the widest point of the tire, and that's our only point that we need to worry about, and then we'll come to the back. Again, fewer points the better, you can adjust the curvature, it's easier to get a nice smooth body if you use less points. So we want to display the, um, the curvature, just so it's easier to work with. To me these kind of represent pressure gradients, um, so it's kind of easy to tell a pressure distribution along it or how, how much airflow, how much it'll have to accelerate to come around that curve kind of a thing. Now that might be bad thinking, but it's just how I've kind of thought about it. So bring that curvature a little more in. I also made the front curve a front stagnation point already. Now we're just bringing that closer still has to fit around the body, or around the wheels, um, but we want it to be as snug in there as possible, and as smooth curvature as, pos as possible. Excuse me. Now going towards the back, you want a little flatter, because it's, um, it's difficult for, the, uh, for air to stay attached as it's becoming more, I guess, circular like that towards the back. You just want it to be able to go nice and smooth towards the, the rear end. So I'm checking, making sure I think that will have enough curvature to go around the back wheel. Uh, now I'm going to adjust the front stagnation point just a bit. Now, for now, 
I don't know what this... Oh, this... Okay, so now you want to mirror your your spline around that um, guide curve I just put down the middle. It may look like it's really fat right now. I think so, too. Um, but you're just going to have to work with your constraints. So I thought that was a little bit too big and a little bad, so I'm changing the blunt stagnation point. Technically, a smaller stagnation point is proven better, at least the results from my parameter studies thus far. But you don't want it to make too sharp of curvature around those wheels. So as you can see, I'm just kind of snugging it back in, trying to get it close, trying to smooth out that curvature. Closer to a straight line going back is probably better. I haven't done any parameter studies to actually test the shape of this body or this cross section in particular. I'm hoping to do that in the next week or so before graduation and then get the results saved. Um, <clears throat> now I'm just defining how much length it is to that point to see the horizontal width. Uh, 16 is quite high, so I can manually change that just by typing in a number. And there you go. Now it's down to 15. I want to make sure it still fits around my wheels, and it does. We look good. See, still got plenty of room. And to me, that looks pretty good. So we'll exit that sketch, or maybe not. Ah uh, yeah, so you got to make sure all of your points are piercing the other curves. So the front point has to pierce the two guide curves you made before. So you click on the back point, click, uh, hold it, control, and then click on another one on the the guide curves, and then define the um, the properties as pierce. If you forget to pierce them. Um, you'll have problems with locking. So if you're if you're doubting whether you pierced it or not, you just re-pierce it. It will save you a lot of heartache. <laughs> so now we're done with that. We've got the basic um, horizontal and vertical cross sections defined, or the basic, I guess, enveloping shape. Now we'll begin with our actual vertical vertical cross sections. I was misquoting; those were not vertical cross sections before; those were just our um, our guide curves. So we're going to hide all the useless stuff we don't need; those extra planes. And we're going to go so. Now we're going to make reference planes on the key points of our body where we need vertical guide curves to get around um, protrusions of our constraints. So one is around the wheels. So we're going to make a, um, a reference plane right on top of the top point of the wheel. We're going to make another reference plane parallel to that on the top point of the engine block. We're going to make another reference plane, defining uh, parallel to those, um, going around that the midpoint of the rear wheel. I find that's best because if you forget to do that, sometimes it can come in too close and cut off your wheel, and it's hard to get fairings to go around the, the weird back shape back there unless you specifically define it. Then one also parallel reference plane on the front near the feet. Um, those are the areas you need to get around, and they're the most difficult to keep inside your curves. Um, I would suggest only putting them around the most, um, putting reference planes around the most protrude or the the widest protrusions of your body, uh, the ones that are hardest to keep in your loft, if that makes sense. So now we're going to define the vertical cross section. 